Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about uh, how to solve an exponential equation. In this case we're going to talk about ones that don't actually require logarithms. And since we haven't talked about logarithms, you don't even know what that means yet. Um, but these are basically, um, I have a variable up in the exponent. That makes it an exponential equation. You'll notice that in all of my examples here. And I've actually got the wrong sheet. Um, but, um, but these particular examples don't require anything really particularly special in order to solve them. Okay, so that's what I want to work on today. Let me switch to my different sheet here. Looks the same except uh, towards the bottom. Okay, so here we go. Here's what I know. See, if I have four raised to the two p power and four raised to the negative two p minus one power, then the only way that the left side and the right side are equal to each other is if those exponents are the same. Okay, so in other words, what I can do is I can say, you know what, um, if four raised to this side and four raised to that side are the same thing, then the exponents, these two parts, must be the same as each other. And that's only the case if I have the same number here. The 4 and the 4 are the same, okay? So um, this turns into being like an Algebra 1 problem, right? I would add 2p to both sides. I would add 2p to both sides. That gives me 4p is on the left and a negative 1 on the right. And uh, if I divide out the 4, that means p must be a negative 1 fourth, okay? I could easily go through and check it if I wanted to by actually plugging in negative 4 1 fourth for p. But for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and skip that. So that's a pretty easy example. The question is, what happens if I don't have, like in this case, 3 raised to a power, and that's not 3 raised to a power? Well, what would be nice is if I understood that in all of these problems that you're going to be working in the homework, the first thing I want to check is to make sure, is that 3 raised to a power? And so let's go through and let's just, uh, let's just type it out. You know, what's 3 to the third power? Uh, not big enough. What's 3 to the fourth power? Uh, not big enough. 3 to the fifth power. Oh, hey, look at that. That's 3 to the fifth power. Okay, so in that case, what I want to first do is rewrite this as the same base, 3 raised to a power on the left, so let's use 3 raised to a power on the right, and it's 3 to the fifth power. And now it looks like the first problem. If 3 to the 1 minus 2x is the same thing as 3 to the fifth, then that means that 1 minus 2x must be the same thing as 5. And so uh, let's subtract 1 from both sides, and that gives me a negative 2x on the left and a positive 4 on the right. Divide by negative 2 being careful about my negative signs here. X must be a negative 2. Okay, two more examples. Ready? Hopefully that makes sense. So in other words, the trick here is get them both to have the same base. 3 raised to a power, make that 3 raised to a power. What do we do if we have a 1 then? Well, it's impossible to rate, make this like a 1 to a power, okay, because 1 times anything, you know, it doesn't matter how many times I raise it, it's, it's 1. But what I need to look at this then, okay, this curious case here where I have a 1, think of it not as 1, but think of it as 4 raised to the 0 power, okay? That's the trick on this one. So anytime you see a 1, think of it as something raised to the 0 power, which is awesome because it doesn't matter what this number is, I can make anything raised to the 0 power equal 1, right? And so that means that the 3x minus 2 must be equal to 0. Let's add the 2 to both sides. That gives me 3x is equal to 2. And when I divide out the 3, that gives me x is 2 thirds. Last problem. What do I do whenever I have fractions? First things first, let's look and see. See, this is 2 raised to a power, so it would be really nice if I can make this a 2 raised to the power. So let's go through and figure out exactly what that is. Let's see. 2 raised to the 4th uh, power? Nope. 2 raised to the 5th power? Aha. That's 2 raised to the 5th power. So let's write it like this. 2 to the x times 1 over 2 to the 5th is equal to 2 to the 5th. Okay, so I just replaced 32 with 2 to the 5th power. Next step, see this thing right here? If I'm good with my rules of exponents, I understand that that can be written as, instead of 2 to the positive 5th on the bottom, I can write it as 2 to the negative 5th on the top. So that piece just got replaced by 2 to the negative 5th is equal to 2 to the 5th. Okay, next rule. Um, you probably remember it. Let's, let's go back here, a little bit of review. Remember if I do x squared times x cubed, I just add the exponents, it's x to the fifth. Well, that's like the same thing. It's 2 squared times 2 cubed would be 2 to the fifth. So what do you think 2 to the x times 2 to the negative 5 is? That's 2 to the x minus 5. I just add the two together, right? That's the rule here. When I multiply things with the same bases, I just add the exponents up. The only time I don't add is if I'm raising a power to a power, and I don't see that here, right? So this left side becomes 2 to the x minus 5, and the right side is equal to 2 to the fifth power. And now I have them both 
I have them both in the same base, and so now I can say x minus 5 is equal to 5. Let's add the 5 to both sides. That means x is equal to 10. The answer is 10. So hopefully that makes sense. Four quick examples here of what you do. Same base, it's easy, just drop them. Different bases, make them the same base. Rewrite them, so three to the power on both sides in this case. What do I do when I get a one? I write it as anything to the zero power, whatever I need to the zero power. And then don't forget rules of exponents so I can write negative exponents here, right? Two to the negative fifth is what I wanted to go towards. And don't forget that I can take two exponents when I multiply things with the same base, I just add the exponents. So that becomes x plus a negative five or x minus five. If you remember those four rules, you're gonna get through the homework pretty quickly and easily today.